afternoon actually praise God I want to enjoy the word of God again it will only get better for you I, I said it will be only getting better for you in the name of Jesus oh by the way if you're blessed by the special number shout hallelujah amen amen all of you online we saw your messages we are the choir on the behalf of the choir we are very pleased that you are blessed god bless you we covet your prayers praise the lord it shall be joy for you i said it shall be joy for you whether the devil Amen. likes it or not it shall be joy for you pray Amen. praise the lord and today we want to share we want to go into the word of god this this afternoon I am sure that the word of God will bless you. Are you there? I said it will bless you. You may want to title today's, uh, this afternoon's message as divine transformation. Divine transformation. Divine transformation. In Romans chapter 12 and verse 2, the Bible says, and be ye be not conformed, but I said, I, he said, and be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. Why? That ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God to perfect all that concerns you. It takes a transformation through the mind for you to assess the perfect will of God which includes perfecting that which concerns you. Until your mind is renewed, you don't give God the allowance to perfect that which concerns you. You can't be going with the old kind of mind and expect God to do a new thing in your life. He said, behold, I do a new thing, shall ye not know it? God's will is to want to do a new thing in your life. To make you complete in him who is the head of all principalities and powers. But until your mind is renewed, 
You don't give him the opportunity to do that. He said, be ye renewed. Don't carry your old mindset. New things will happen to you this month. Amen. I, I say new things will happen to you this month. Amen. So you need a new mind for new things. Like I said in the first service, you can't be carrying, you can't be doing the same old thing and want the same result. It, it, another result, you will get the same thing. So you need new mind. Be renewed. You, you were, your mind was new before. Renew it again. That's what they call renew. Like you say, wine, rewind. So now renew. Praise God. Are you there? Praise God. Are you still there? Praise the Lord. There are, there, are, there are been perfect men in the days of old. There are still perfect men today, men today, but there are not plenty. Praise God. I pray that you will be enlisted among the perfect. What kind of women is this one? When Abraham was 99 years old, the Lord appeared to him. He said to him, I am the almighty God walk before me and be thou perfect. Genesis chapter 17 and verse 1. Walk before me. In other words, be walking with me and be perfect. When you walk with me, you will experience perfection. May God perfect that which concerns you. But you need to walk with God. What he says to one, he says to all. You can't be walking with the devil and be telling God to perfect you. You can't be walking contrary to God and expect God to perfect you. It doesn't work that way. Light and darkness don't coexist. Amen. Are you still there? Amen. Are you sleeping? I said amen. amen. <laughs> so it takes you walking with God. I said renew your mind. Now walk with God. Stop walking with strange things that God does not recognize. The man called Noah, the Bible said he was a just man. He was a just man and he, the Bible says he was perfect in his generation. May you be perfect in your generation. Amen. The Bible did not say all of them was perfect. In their he said this man called Noah in his generation, he was perfect. May God single you out for perfection. Amen among your peers, among your mother's children, your father's children, may you be singled out for perfection. Amen. Noah. Genesis chapter 6 and verse 9. Genesis 6, 9. Noah was perfect in his generation. And of course, all of you know Job. Praise God. Job was perfect in his generation. The Bible says he was perfect and upright. <laughs> Somebody who feared God and he ensured evil. That was his lifestyle. The Bible says Job was perfect. So he became the greatest in all of the East. Special man. When you choose to do special things in God, God allows spectacular things to happen to you. When you choose to do special things in God, God allows spectacular things, glorious things to happen to you among many. That's why the Bible says you are a peculiar people. Very peculiar you are not everybody. Tell your neighbor, I'm not, I'm not like you. Tell your neighbor, I'm not like you. I'm not like you. I'm not like you. Hey, don't think we are the same. Praise God. Tell your neighbor, we are not the same. We are not the same. Uh, praise God. Tell your neighbor, my level don't high. My level don't high. You are not telling your neighbor. I said, tell your neighbor, my level don't high. Okay, so, renewed. Praise the Lord.
God's word it encourages us to be perfect. If you look at Second Corinthians chapter thirteen and verse eleven, Second Corinthians chapter thirteen and verse eleven, he said, "Finally, my brethren," he was talking to brethren. It's a final talk, the conclusion of the matter. He said, "Be perfect, be of good comfort, be of one mind." That is, if my mind is renewed, all of us, our mind has to be renewed. Otherwise, we are not the same. Be of one mind. Live in peace. And that's why I love the special number. I made my choice to rejoice. It is my will to be rejoiced. The world may want to take that from me, but I choose to hold on to it. It's my choice. Praise God. Are you there? Praise God. Hallelujah. It is your choice to rejoice. If you allow this world to steal your joy. Praise God. The Bible says he has given me freely all things to enjoy. God wants me to enjoy life. I don't know about you. Were you called to suffer? Answer me. Were you called to suffer? Because maybe the suffering that Jesus suffered on your behalf is not enough. You want to carry on the suffer. Praise God. Jesus has suffered for me already. Now it's for me to enjoy. You will enjoy life. Amen. You will enjoy this life. Amen. So the Bible says, be perfect. Hallelujah. Amen. But ensue evil. Be upright. Ensue evil. I have nothing to do with evil. Walk with God. Praise the Lord. Be a special person in your generation. Don't be like everybody. Don't allow the things that worry everybody to worry you take responsibility and then you will have access the Bible says the joy of the Lord is your strength am I right? Uh -huh. so we find strength in joy praise God the strength to move on the strength to press on towards the mark of the high calling of God the strength not to give in to the devil or give up praise God and that is, that is that's what we are calling to this life is a fight but it's a fight that we hand over to God so that we can have peace. Praise God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. So I encourage us to be perfect because God says you should be perfect. And the Lord will perfect all that concerns you in Jesus' name. Perfection. Jesus, God told them, disciple, walk with me. Like he told Abraham, walk with me. In other words, as I'm taking step, take step. The way I'm talking, talk that way. Just begin to look at me, walk with me, and begin. Let me be your mentor. Look at me, and then you'll be you'll be learning perfection. Praise the Lord. That's why you and I, we must have a mentor in Christ in God through you make a, a, a mentor in God through Christ Jesus to walk in perfection in Luke chapter 6 and verse 39 I want to show you this, this very interesting scripture is the anchor of the message in Luke chapter 6 and verse 39 Luke chapter 6 and verse 39 and 40 he said and he spake a parable unto them he said can the blind lead the blind shall they not both fall into the ditch he said the disciple is not above his master but everyone that is perfect shall do what? Shall do what? So when you choose to want to be like your master, you are perfect. Praise God. Okay, maybe I should ask, what is, who is your master? Money? Who is your master? Praise God. So you need to know who your master is. 
you need to be like your master if your master is your boss at work well be like him praise the lord but if he is jesus if it is jesus don't in other words say there is no perfection above god so he says you cannot be above your master it's not possible there is no other perfection above god he's the end and the fullness of all perfection praise god so he said it's enough to be like your master be like him be perfect like him so he becomes your ride into perfection i thought i would hear an amen, amen. jesus becomes your ride your master becomes your ride into perfection hear me somebody you will go with perfect that we concerns you Amen. so your master you have something to look up to for you to walk in perfection God told them walk with me now Jesus is telling you be like me the Bible says you err not knowing the scripture you have not learned Christ you like it is, it is one thing to read Christ it's another thing to learn him go, go and study Jesus Christ from the scripture understand his personality and try to plug in praise God be like him praise God thank you Lord Jesus so if you don't know any perfect man at all because if if, if any of you look at each other and said, learn from me, you know I'm perfect. Praise God. <laughs> Hallelujah. I mean, you can imagine if that man now just tells this other man and says, learn from me. Yeah, you know I'm perfect. Praise God. <laughs> then you just laugh and say, see this one I know from here. <laughs> Praise the Lord. No. Okay. We don't. Okay, now Jesus look at Jesus, your master, your master, then learn from him. At least you have a personality. Can I hear an amen? amen? But let me tell you, there are some people that are already working in perfection. You just don't know them. Praise God. You just don't know them. You will think, I just told you about Jesus. He went to his own. They just, they just like carpenter son that we know. See his brother. In fact, his sister is by but is my neighbor. When his mother was pressing him inside the district, I was there. His first cry, I had it. That's how he cried. And now he's now coming, saying, Be savior. Savior of my foot. He could dare do no great work. Praise God. So don't take that your neighbor for granted. It will just surprise you. Praise God. Tell your neighbor, my God will surprise you. My God will surprise you. Amen. <laughs> you know what the Bible says that the, the stone that the builders reject, they now become the head of the cornerstone. You shall be the head. Amen. In Jesus' name. Jesus was speaking. Let's look at now Jesus. He was speaking. He, he kept making reference to the things that God was doing. He always ascribed the things that he does, the works that he does to the Father. He always said, it's not me, it's the Father. What I hear the Father says, that's what I do. What I see him do, that's what I'm doing. We too should learn from him. What I see Jesus do in his word, I do. And then we'll plug into that divine perfection. Remember the, te the top topic is divine transformation. It is when you understand what I'm saying, you begin to transform from being ordinary men. Men who die ordinarily. He said, the Bible said they die like men. I have said, ye are gods, and that ye are the children of the most high God. He said, but they shall die like men. Praise God. They die like ordinary men. 
Hallelujah. You know, do you know you are not ordinary? Say it with me. I am not ordinary. You are really not. There's something about you that is completely divine. Like I said, is it you are complete in him? Outside him, you are not complete. As verse failed. Praise God. Something is lacking. Hallelujah. But in him, I'm complete in him. I'm complete in him who is the head of all principalities and powers. I am complete in him. Thank you, Jesus. Look at what Jesus said here. Look at John, John chapter 5 and verse 19. John chapter 5 and verse 19. Then said Jesus unto them, John 5, 19. Verily, verily, I say unto you, the son can do nothing of himself, but what he seeth the father do, what he seeth the father do, for what things soever he doeth, this also doeth who? The son likewise. God is a perfect God. Jesus plugged into that perfection. It is only wise for you and I to plug into the personality of our Lord Jesus Christ so that we can assess perfection. Because you can only be complete in him, not outside him. Praise God. And that means you can only be transformed into the realm of perfectness if you take this responsibility. Renew your mind. Take Jesus as your mentor. Walk with God. Praise God. And your path becomes divine. It's not about flaunting a religion or flaunting I am, I don't know what to anybody. No, it's about who you are in God. Simple. Praise God. Are you still there? Praise God. The question is, what are the things you see Jesus do? You know, some of us, we will not read the scripture. Praise the Lord. We will not read the scripture. We don't know the personality of Jesus. The ones that Facebook says and what somebody says somewhere is what we know. And when we want to even quote it, we don't quote it correctly. But what is your personal encounter with Jesus? What can you tell? Can you really sit your own child? Can you sit your child down and tell your child about Jesus? Praise God. And while you are telling, while you are telling your child about Jesus, let an adult or your pastor be there. Because you know you can lie to a child. The child will accept the lie. Praise the Lord. You know Jesus Christ is a superman. He, 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 say with me, Jesus is a superman. The child say, Jesus is a superman. After the child go come, how be Jesus? How Jesus is a superman? Explain to us. Praise God. You don't know. Hey, I was just teaching her now. Praise the Lord. How is he a superman? You don't know. Praise the Lord. So what do you see? What personality of Christ do you know? So that we can plug into the perfection. Because if you don't plug into it, you can talk perfection. God, the Lord, a perfect Lord that concerns me. Mm, okay, sit down there. Praise God. You need to, you need to pack, pass, plug into the personality of this perfect Christ who also took responsibility to plug into the perfection of God. If Jesus had to plug into God, who are you not to plug into Christ? Our perfection is of him, not, our, not by ourselves. That's why we sang, you are God all by yourself. Is God by himself. Nobody made him to be perfect. If somebody made him perfect, then that person is more perfect. Praise God. So is God by himself, is a perfect God, then Jesus plug into that perfection, then you and I, who have given our life to him, and he said be perfect, then you plug into him. And that's how we become one with the Father. If you abide in me, 
and my words abide in you then you shall ask what you will and it shall be given to you you plug into him praise God you can't be outside and claim completeness you are deceiving yourself even Jesus said something he said something he said my father walketh he that do I walk John 5 17 my father is walking I see that he's walking me too I am walking then who are you not to walk praise God and what are the works of your hand let me quickly talk to those of you who are serving God in whatever capacity you are serving God I have good news for you I said I have good news for you those of you who you know you are serving God you know yourself that you are serving God I said I have good news for you let me show you that good news from Luke chapter 22 Luke chapter 22 and verse 25 down to 27. Luke chapter 22, I'll read from verse 25. And he said unto them, The kings of the Gentiles exercise lordship over them, and they that exercise authority upon them are called benefactors. But ye shall not be so. Don't be like those ones. But he that is greatest among you, let him be as the younger. Don't be forming old man. Help me tell your neighbor, don't they form old man for me. And he that is chief as he that does serve. For whether is greater, in other words, which one is greater? He that seated at meat or he that serveth is not he that seated at meat but I am among you as what? as he that serveth Jesus said I am among you as the one I'm not sitting there and saying you know everybody is greeting me dumb are you following me? auntie mama you know, you know, ladies like that thing. Praise God. When you are calling them mama, they feel it's a sign of respect. You don't know they are telling you you are close to your grave. Praise God. Hey, mama, mama, what's up, mama? I all love you, mama. They are telling you you are going to die. We are wuna. Praise God. I will live longer than you. They are telling you, old woman. Praise God. You sit down. They just, everybody's coming to greet you and you too you are happy you too you know your age you know your age that you are not old hallelujah you know people are using their mouth to, to, to cage you take out youth out of you plugging you into where you will begin to rot make you start having wrinkle and a posture that is close to the grave Instead of you to be smart, like your pastor, you decide to be like this. How are you? Wakoyo, wakoyo, Imani. Praise God. <laughs> you are going. Wekpana. Praise God. You are on your way. And God did not call you to die. Joshua, at at the age he was, he was still he still climbing horse with his back over 90 he said my my I, I am still strong as when i was in a youth when i was called into ministry i'm still strong like that one but you because you are 35 years old because you are 40 if they don't greet you you are offended praise god don't let the grave come for you praise the lord if you look at me, you will know that I'm very far from the grave. I'm very far. 
Praise God. I don't know about you. Praise God. They are very far. I'm, I'm sure you cannot even see my grave. You can't see it. Praise God. Very far. Very far. Praise God. But some people, their grave is just in front of them like this. It's just for them to just enter. That's the meaning. Because they are acting like that. Jesus said, I am among you as one that serves, not the one that sits down. That people are just giving them food and bringing food to you. You are just eating and you are eating meat. You keep eating meat. Your stomach is expanding. You now bring beer. You knock the beer. They put wine on top. You eat it. They bring a golden gin. You knock them on top. They bring it. You eat it. They will now give you cola. You chop it. If they give you speed, they will give you You smoke it. Praise God. And you say, I'm enjoying life. I am among you as one that serve it. So if Jesus served, all of you who are serving God, and you know you are serving God, let me inform you that you are walking in perfection. No, I know some of you don't believe it. That's why I didn't say amen. I just told you that Jesus is plugging into God. He is serving. My father walketh and I walk. I am among you, even though I'm your master, I am serving. So those that will serve with me, having this stress of service, they are walking in my perfection. That is why some goodness will not escape some people here. You know, they, they, you, nobody serves God and God does not reward. It's not possible. The Bible says he's a rewarder. God is a what? Mm -hmm. It's not somebody who uses people. He's a rewarder. You serve him, he will give you what your reward is. He won't say, I won't pay you. No, nope. God has enough. Plenty. Too much. So the question is, are you really serving and how are you serving? Because if you are serving to collect glory on the earth, the Bible says you have collected your reward on the earth. Am I following? Am I talking? You, if you, if you, if you are doing it to take glory, you say if you, if you, if you do this to any of these children, you have done it unto me, right? But if you are doing it to collect glory, you have collected your reward. God will not give you double reward. You have said, God, keep your reward. I have got one here, and God will keep his thing. But if you are doing it to the glory of God. Praise God. I saw recently in a church. A pastor was giving on his birthday I guess. He was giving out you know, some cash to some people. He was not waiting for them to lie down on the floor. He would just give them. Say, Mama go. Thank you. Thank you. He was giving them. Because some people are ready to roll on the floor. Because they have seen money. Hey, thank you, thank you. Go, 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 praise God. No, I'm give go, 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 go. But you see, some people after I give them, the person begin to roll. Thank you. you say, you know, just stand like this. Hallelujah. That's the Holy Ghost. <laughs> praise God. The person, <laughs> the person is rolling on the floor. For you, say, that's the Holy Ghost. It's the anointing. Praise God. He's thanking you. He says, it's the anointing. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. So you receive, you, there is a blessing that should come to you, but don't be looking out for something from people when you do things. God will keep his own. He, will, he, won't, he won't overpay you. He won't. He will just pay you according to what he can see. God looks at the intent of the heart. The intent. Don't allow the intent of your heart rob you of the rewarder. Because what is coming from him is bigger than what any human being wants to give you. It, 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 it will open up your destiny to another level. Man, he will thank you today. Tomorrow he will beat you. Praise God. He will thank you today. He will roll on the floor. If I roll inside gutter, he will call you God. Wait for that day where he will slap you. Yeah, because I roll for you that day. Now because you give money, I did go through suffer. Now suffer. Cause I'm, if not, we suffer. You just have to rope myself for ground. Get, get, get out. Get, 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 get away, you. See, me, me, after all I've done for you, they will slap you again. But when God blesses a man, you are blessed. 
it will just take you from the crowd just take you up praise god just take you up you know you know a a a, a, a pyramid me i want to be at that top the pinnacle there not be where everybody is gathering here up there that place praise god but the question you will ask yourself if you want to be there why do you want to be there is it that so you can tell everybody that look i've made it all of you are under my foot no so that you can be a source a hand of god to reach out to many to everyone that is under but people they get up there they stay there and then they lord it over everybody match them if god sees your heart that way he will not allow you to be there because he can see the intent of your heart he can't give you a reward that will make people to be um, to be oppressed under you if god knows that the reward will make people make you to begin to oppress people he won't give you because he said my people will not be oppressed you are not pharaoh now and i will not make you i will not make you to become pharaoh i want to give you but since i've seen your heart that you will begin to oppress people sorry i'm not giving you when you learn humility and how to reach out to people i will give it to you it is safe the reward is safe with me that means you are not qualified for god to perfect that which concerns you now you need to pass an exam then he will if you pass the exam he gives it to you god is a powerful teacher praise god did somebody understand what i'm saying please understand in service things of life we negotiate your service to god praise the lord if you allow anything to, to, to negotiate your service to God, you are the one that will be robbed of the reward. I want it to ring in your spirit. God is the rewarder. Because I'm talking about transformation. If you want to leave the level you are to a greater level, you, you will be transformed by what you do and how you do what you do in God. Hallelujah. For example, if you were coming early to, ch to church, you know, like this morning, we were a little bit late coming to church and all that, and then now uh, I won't be coming to church early again. Praise the Lord. I won't be doing what? Um, Pastor does you open church early, so I won't be coming to church early again. Praise the Lord. Do you think that does harm to Pastor? or it does harm to you that will not be coming to church early again praise the lord we must we must draw the line between you and god and people praise the lord if you let people determine your connection with god you lose your reward with god praise the lord that's how it works but you will not lose you will not lose out. You don't let anything negotiate. You remember when the Israelites wanted to leave Egypt? Let my people go that they may serve me. They came to the Pharaoh. Pharaoh, let my people go. We, we got to go. We need to go and serve our God. After they've talked, talked, talk, okay, you know what? How many of you are going? Huh? All of us now. All of us. Pata, pata that are going. All of you, I know all of you cannot go. You go and leave all your anima. Praise God. They say, no, we can't. Okay, what are we going to sacrifice to our God if we get there? We need to sacrifice to our God. They say, okay, go, go with everything, but leave your children. And no, we are not leaving our children because our children is part of us. We will all go. Everybody will say Pharaoh was negotiating their service to God. To God, God said, Let my people go so that they can serve me. But Pharaoh was negotiating what and who should go and serve him. They said no until everybody got to go. Everybody, our cattle, our sheep, our chicken, our children, our everything that belongs to us must our property must go and serve God so in life don't allow anything negotiate your service to God it is you that is serving God now 
It's your God. That's why I love that song. You are God all by yourself. I love the song. It, it is telling me my intimacy with God. It's a private room of me and God. It's our personal bedroom. It makes me feel closer to God than ever before. So that I can respect the sacredness of my relationship with God. Praise the Lord. I said praise the Lord. This is very, very important. You can see all that in Exodus chapter 10. Negotiating uh, all this. Uh, they are going out of Egypt. Praise the Lord. Everything that belongs to you, anything connected to you, we serve God. Your husband will serve God. Your children will serve God. Your property will serve God. Your grand great children will serve God. Everything around you will serve God. As for me and my household, we shall do what? Yes, everything, everything, everything will serve God. Not one will be lost in Jesus' name. But understand that everything we like to negotiate, the world we like to negotiate it. Don't be, don't get sad because something is negotiating something. Just know that that's what the devil wants. But you have what it takes to flood that devil. You are not supposed to give up to anything that will negotiate God. Praise the Lord. So many things I've tried to negotiate my time with God in ministry. It has been my choice not to allow that one. There have been choices that will not allow me to be here. And they are always available. It is the one that allows me to be here that is scarce. The job that, the one that is scarce is the one that will not allow me to be here. But the one that will not allow me to be here, they are very available. Sunday, you go to church. Tuesday, Thursday, every time. You church. And you will make money too. Your head may fail, but it's okay. It's a bit of money. Praise the Lord. But in this life, the devil will not negotiate jack. Praise God. And we have been in this matter for years now. So I know that Jesus is winning. And because the devil knows I will not agree to his negotiation, he knows. God will always supply, makes a way for me to make sure that it is the job that will allow me to be in his presence. To be a blessing to great people like you. That's the type of job he will give to me. And because he also knows that I will not be the type to have the time and be at home. I will not be the type that I'm supposed to be here. I'll be found Galivanti Rantan. If I'm not here, I will, my body will not, the thing will not. Somebody, one of my siblings wanted to hold mommy down on Thursday. She had to drop them and leave them. That is somebody, I want to be in presence of God. I'm supposed to be there. I must not be late. How many Christians carry that one now? In these days that we just find people who just come and greet you on Sunday that you're supposed to be in church and because of that one you will not be in church you know uh, my uncle just came what, what should I do now and the uncle will come you will buy him beer you will drink, smoke and do everything watch television, chat and talk and gossip and then you have left God maybe if God has collected some did not allow a blessing in your life you will not even be inside the house. Maybe if he had not given you an apartment, you will not have where to come and somebody will come and greet you on Sunday. Maybe if you were squatting with somebody in one corner of a room, you will not have visitor to come and greet you in the house. So it is now God's fault that you have an apartment that is called your own. Where people can come and visit you anytime without no respect to God. And then you say, God, perfect that which concerns me. How? For, to, for you to continue this way, so that I will lose you finally, I don't want to lose you. It's better for you not to have any reward, so that you remain here. I don't want to lose you. I don't want you to bury. So, no more apartment. They collect the apartment. You have a child before. You get time, collect the child from you, so that you won't say it is child that is making you not to come to church and serve God. Praise God. Something will just happen. They collect the child. And things begin to go down. 
just because you don't have time for God anymore. Hmm. But that will not happen to you in Jesus' name. That's why everything that is you, everything that you have, everything that God has blessed you with, and everything that God is going to bless you with, determine in your heart that that thing will serve God. Must serve God. Ah, which, no alternative. Everything must serve God. So when your commitment is showing, God says, I am also committed to you. I will perfect all that concerns you. Shout hallelujah. Philippians chapter 3 and verse 15. Philippians 3 and 15 says, Let us therefore, as many as be perfect, be thus minded, have this mind, and if in anything ye be otherwise minded, God shall reveal even this unto you. Have this mind to be renewed. Have this mind to serve God with all of your heart, with everything that God has blessed you with. Have this mind, be renewed. When you have that mind, God has a mind to bless somebody here today. Remember, remember. If you can carry the scripture, if you can handle the scripture, the gospel, it will lead you into perfection. Colossians chapter 1 and verse 27. Colossians 1, 27 to 29. To whom God would make known what is the riches of his glory of the mystery among the Gentiles, which is Christ in you, the hope of glory, whom we preach, warning every man and teaching every man in all wisdom that we may present every man perfect in Christ. 